Hi, I'm Paul from Easy Composites, and today I'll be showing you how you can use sheet wax to produce a mould for a properly fitting cover component, such as this carbon fibre frame protector. I'll show you how to apply the sheet wax to the original part and then use this to create an offset mould that's slightly larger than that original part. In a later tutorial, we'll use this mould to make the frame protector itself. There are many instances where you might want to make a cover or a protector for an existing component. This might be a clutch protector or an exhaust shield on a motorcycle. It could be sill protectors or interior trim pieces on a car. The example we're using today is this carbon fibre frame protector. You might assume that to make a mould for a cover component is simply a case of taking a mould from the original shape and then using that to create the part. However, if you were to do this, the part that you made would actually be too small on the inside to fit back over the original shape. So we need to make a mould which is larger. So if we take a look at the example mould, you'll see that it is slightly larger than the part itself, and this is what's called an offset. We can see that we have a two millimetre offset all the way around this part. So there's a gap that runs right the way around, and that will mean that we can make a part inside this mould which is up to two millimetres thick from the surface and it will still fit over the original shape. The easiest way to create an offset on your mould is to use sheet wax. Here at Easy Composites we carry a range of different thicknesses suitable for creating different offsets depending on what you need. For this project we'll be using the two millimetre sheet wax. So the sheet wax is literally just that, it's a sheet of wax, the reverse side has a self-adhesive backing which means you can apply it directly onto your part and it's very very pliable and with some heat it can follow compound curves quite easily. So now we're just going to measure up and get the dimensions for this frame protector. We will cut the sheet wax larger because we're also going to use the sheet wax for the flanges. You'll see that in a moment. So 300 millimeters in length for the final guard and approximately 100 millimeters in width. So we'll just oversize that slightly. Here I'm marking out and cutting the sheet wax to the size of the surface plus a border that will provide the additional material to form the flange. Using a straight edge and a sharp knife easily cuts the wax. To form the sheet wax you can do quite a lot by hand and it will follow the curves quite easily but using a hairdryer or a heat gun will make it more pliable for complicated areas. The overhang from the sheet wax here is going to form the flange of the mould, but because this material is quite pliable, I'm going to add some filleting wax just onto the underside to give them a bit more stability. For this job, it's been perfectly practical to do this in one piece. So here we've got no joins, but on larger or more complicated shapes, you might have to create a join in the sheet wax. I'm just gonna quickly show you how that's done neatly. This curved cut is made as an example of the sort of edge that you might need to make a joint against. The second piece of material is cut oversized and overlaps the piece that you're wanting to join to. If you then press the sheet firmly against the underlying piece, this will make an impression in the sheet and witness through, making visible the precise position of where the cut needs to be made. After making the cut and removing the excess material, any slight gaps remaining can be closed up by firmly pushing and sliding the pieces together. To seal the join, filleting wax is rubbed into the joint, and then the joint is scraped back to level it out and remove any burring. Finally, a buff over with a cloth will leave you with an almost seamless finish. Now that the sheet wax is applied, I'm just going to mask off the rest of the frame to protect it from any splashes of gel coat. To produce a small mould like this, all of the materials that are required are included in our mould making starter kit. So that's what we're going to use for this project. Inside the kit, we have the epoxy tooling gel coat and hardener, the epoxy mold making putty and its hardener, 
Then we have laminating brushes, some nitrile gloves, mixing sticks and cups. And also included in the kit is mold release wax and PVA release agent. Now we won't be using those today, but generally when you're making a mold, you would be doing. As with any epoxy resin, accurate weighing and thorough mixing is essential to ensure a proper and complete cure. For this mold, we will be doing two gel coat applications, so I'll be using half of the 200 gram pot for each. When you mix the hardener into the gel coat, you need to do this very steadily so you don't whisk air in. It also needs to be very thoroughly mixed. So that would normally take probably three or four minutes on a batch like this. As with all epoxies, it's really important to scrape the sides and the bottom to make sure that you don't have any unmixed resins stuck in those areas. You may have noticed that we haven't used any release agent. That's because with epoxy resin and sheet wax, it's not necessary. You will get a good release anyway. The gel coat is applied with a thick and even coat. The technique involves using slow brush strokes with a heavily loaded brush, a sort of halfway between spreading and painting. On flatter surfaces, often a single thick application of gel coat is all that's needed, but generally for most moulds two coats of gel is preferred. The aim here is to apply as thick a coat as you can without the gel starting to slump or drain from the steeper or vertical surfaces. This will normally equate to around 500 grams per square metre per coat. You should also take care to ensure that the coat is even and not to have any areas with pools of gel coat as these will shrink excessively during cure and could cause slight distortions on the final mould. We've left the first application of gel coat to tack off. That's taken three hours in our case. It will vary a bit depending on room temperature. The important thing is that the gel still has a good level of tack to allow the next layer to bond. To identify if you're at the right level of tack, you'll feel the surface is still very sticky, but none of the gel coat comes off on your finger when you do that. The second application is done in exactly the same way as the first coat. It is worth pointing out that although we are using this project to demonstrate our small mold making kit, we do have all of these materials available individually and in bulk quantities on our website. And of course, this is only one of the many mold making solutions that Easy Composites offers. With the second gel at the same tacky stage, we're ready to go on with the reinforcement. The reinforcement that comes in the starter kit is an epoxy mold making putty or paste. Now this is a very convenient material for making small molds like this as it conforms to the details in the corners very easily. The epoxy mold making putty is essentially made up from a resin and filler and then for the reinforcement there are chopped glass fibres in there so that's where the strength of the mold comes from. Just like epoxy resin, this needs to be combined with a hardener and that does need to be done at an accurate ratio. But because I'm using all of this material, these are already pre-measured so I'm just going to mix the entire contents of the hardener into the paste. To mix the hardener into the putty, it's just done by hand and the blue colour in the hardener helps to identify when it's been fully blended. So once you're happy that the mix is thorough and consistent, the easiest way to work with this material is to spread it out into an area that's roughly the same size as the mould you're going to be working from. And then divide this up into small pieces and apply them to the mould itself. The reason for using small pieces is that when you apply this, it's much easier for any air that would be trapped underneath to escape as you're going. It's simply a case of pressing the material onto the surface and working over it. On a mould like this, you're looking to get an overall thickness of between 10 and 15 millimetres. This paste system is best suited to smaller moulds of up to around half a square metre. Beyond this, it would generally be more cost effective and practical to use glass cloth and epoxy laminating resin to provide the primary reinforcement after the gel. 
In these instances, it can be useful to use the putty in combination to help with filleting sharp corners or getting into finer details that might be tricky to laminate with glass. With the gel coat backed up with reinforcement, we're now going to leave this to fully cure, which is 24 hours at room temperature. We're now 24 hours on and this mould is fully cured, so it's ready for removal. So first of all, we'll just get rid of some of this masking tape. We should be able to remove the mould by just applying a firm pressure and peeling it away from the frame. So there we go, and that's the sheet wax there inside. The filleting wax, we can actually reuse this, so we'll save this for another project. So here we have the sheet wax, which is still stuck to the surface of the mould. To remove this, we're going to use a plastic scraper. So we're using a demolding wedge, which is particularly suitable because it won't scratch the mould and it's got a nice sharp leading edge. Sometimes you might find that sheet wax cracks when you're trying to remove it, especially if you're working in a cold environment. If you use a hairdryer or a heat gun to gently warm the wax, it will make it more pliable. Even after thoroughly scraping the surface, we are still left with some traces of wax, so we're going to remove those with a mould cleaner. So you can see here the finish that we're left with directly from the sheet wax. Now it's not a perfect surface finish, it does have very slight texture to it and it's, it sort of gives a satin finish. If you want a gloss finish part, you need to get a gloss finish onto your mould. To do that, we're going to flat this surface down with a fine wet and dry paper and then go on to polish that with a polishing compound. It is perfectly possible to polish straight from a 1200 grit finish, but actually if you go onto a 1500 grit, you'll find the polishing is quite a lot faster. And now for the final polish, we're going to be using the NW1 polishing compound. For larger moulds, you'd probably use a machine buffer for polishing the surface, but on something like this, it's more than possible to do it by hand. The NW1 compound that we're using here is actually self-diminishing, meaning as you're working it, it gets finer and finer on the grade, leaving a really fine gloss, but still able to get out those 1500 grit scratches at the beginning. This is the completed mould ready to be put into service. I hope this video has helped to explain just how easy it is to create an offset mould using sheet wax. If you want to see this mould being put to use, we have a following video where we use a simple wet lay and vacuum banging technique to produce this carbon fibre frame protector. If you're interested in finding out more about the materials and equipment we've used, visit the Easy Composites website where you'll find an extensive range of composite materials. And as ever, we always appreciate a like and a subscribe.